Miles Galley to jump center against Munir Hima. And we are underway from the Smith Center. Great opportunity for George Washington here to get another important win on that way to getting that seven slot and avoid the eight nine game. This is where you start looking at matchups and you start watching what's happening in the Atlantic 10 with Davidson and VCU jockeying for that first and second spot in the conference. Man to man defense by GW to begin a move from Primo Spears. A jumper in the lane is off to the left, but Hema gets the rebound and Duquesne gets another chance. There is a cuff along jumper no good and Stamoulis with the rebound. And, and you're going to see a lot of that tonight. Duquesne shooting just 28% from three. They only had one three-pointer the entire game against GW on February 16th. Harris has that one stolen away by Hema. Duquesne is 6-21. and 21. They're 1-14 and 14 in the 8-10. They've lost 14 in a row after beating UMass. And Harris gets a rebound on a miss there. GW is 11 and 16, seven and eight in conference play after losing two in a row, trying to get their eighth win at home this season. And a beautiful move by Amir Harris. Really what he wanted to do there on that first possession, he makes it happen on the second try. And he's showing exactly what kind of basketball player he can be. He's really smart, really talented. Knee injuries are the reason he's only got his first start of this season, but he's been a glue guy for this program all year long. Toby Okani gets the ball back over for Tyson Acuff. But Kelja will drive and float in the lane, and that one's short. Miles Galley gets the rebound. Galley's going to graduate in just three years with a finance degree. A really, really sharp young man. Harris kicks it out to Galley. He's going to fire a long three, and it is good! Miles Galley from downtown. And a quick start for GW. The bench is going absolutely berserk and that tells you a lot about the culture of this team and what these seniors mean to the program even if they're not logging a lot of minutes that's only a second field goal attempt of the season and first from downtown and Acuff answers to get Duquesne on the board yeah there's so much fun for these guys as we mentioned Galley and Stamoulos are making their first collegiate starts and they are pumped up to be out there here in the first two plus minutes he's going to fire another one that one's way off and the rebound for Acuff. But Kelja will now fire a three. Back rim that one. And there's Brian Knapp with the rebound. Knapp, a DC native, went to Charles E. Smith Day School, came out, uh, transferred to GW from Cornell. The entry inside to Mulas has his shot blocked away by Acuff and out of bounds to Duquesne. Theo was a manager last year, able to become a roster player. And here's the round of applause from the Smith Center as the seniors are going to sit down. That was a look at Keith Dambrot, the coach of Duquesne. But look at Miles Galley pumped up with that three-pointer. <laughs> and his teammates are loving every minute of this. That's what it's kind of all about, right? There's Okani with the basketball out to Acuff. O'Connor will give it over to Bakelja. He'll fire from the baseline and misses. There's Ricky Lindo Jr. with the rebound. And credit where it's due to that senior group who doesn't get a lot of minutes. They were able to give the, the typical starters a lead coming back into the game. And here are most of the starters you'd expect all season long as Ricky Lindo Jr. will drive with the reverse layup. No good. Hunter Dean gets the basketball and clears it out. Strong board from Dean when I spoke to one of the coaches before the game. They said rebounding's the way that they're going to win this and game. what a pass by Freeman for the finish from Hunter Dean. Got to love it when you get rewarded for that offensive board. Freeman has been on fire the last few games with his distribution, with his shooting. Has really had an uptick every single game this season. And you can talk about the impact of Hunter Dean, too, what he's meant to this program, the way he's played in the A-10. Yes, Losing a little bit. If we can get Joe and James and see them together really playing at a high level, that's when you become a really dangerous team come tournament time next week. Jackie Johnson the third is now guarding Brayon Freeman. Kevin Easley Jr. also in. Another backdoor, and this one to Bamisil. A great play by GW, and the offense off to a nice start in the half court. And a nice little assist from the senior, Ricky Lindo. 
Johnson gets the basketball over to Spears. There's easily to fire a long three, and that one's no good. And Freeman, the rebound. Not a good start for Duquesne. One for nine from the field. The entry to Dean, he goes down hard as the shot's blocked, and it will go to Duquesne. Ricky Lindo sort of peeled off and had a wide open shot in the corner. Jamie and Christian, there's a look at the coach for GW, his third season and 10th overall with stops at Mount St. Mary's and Siena before arriving here at Foggy Bottom. He's three and two against Duquesne in his career. Spears will drive all the way to the bucket, can't get that one to go. Ricky Lindo Jr. on the defense and the ball will go back to GW. You know, Byron, Duquesne had a just 19 points in the first half against GW on February 16th. And, and this is a team that um, moves the ball relatively well, but they just don't knock shots down. And I think a lot of that has to do with youth and a lot of that has to do with bad luck. 39.6% shooting and a ton of injuries, seven transfers, seven starters from last year not on this team, meaning guys that started during a game for Duquesne in 2021. And nice move up and under from Jackie Johnson III. Freeman to the bucket. The layup a little bit too hard. And Duquesne looking a little more comfortable out and running. There's a look at Kevin Easley Jr. again. Jackie Johnson will drive. Crosses over against Bishop and draws the foul. Johnson's a, a guy who can score. He scored 54 points in a scrimmage against Oak Hill Academy. And, you know, just 5'11", has to sort of figure out how to get his shots. Um, but again, there's a lot of talent to unlock for Keith Dambrot's squad. 82% free throw shooter is Jackie Johnson the third. He had 10 against Rhode Island. And substitutions, it'll be Brendan Adams and Kwanzi Samuels for GW. And the big center, Munir Hima, comes back in for the Dukes. There's Toby O'Connor talking with Coach Dambrot. This team shoots 70.9% from the free throw line, making about 9.4 made free throws per game, not too many. And they have cut the lead down to three here with those free throws. Freeman will spin all the way down the lane, left wide open. Johnson said he got pushed. Freeman says, thank you very much, and lays it in. Interesting decision from Keith Dambrot, pressing the whole floor, making Brayon Freeman take the ball all the way across the timeline himself with coverage. And Brayon handled it really, really well for a true freshman. Inside a nice pass to Hema, and he flushes it down. Got the lead back to three. Hema's 6'11", only in his fourth season of playing organized basketball out of Niger. A lot of upside. Yeah, they didn't expect him to have to play these many minutes this year, but because of everything that's happened, he's getting that introduction quicker than they wanted, and he's playing well. Acuff with the Euro step and finishes. You know, Duquesne has spent a lot of this season getting blown out of games. And they are you can see they're very active. You can see they've got a lot of enthusiasm. And you do not want to give a team like that momentum. Joe Bamisil with a nice move, lays it in. It was basket interference, but the ball went in anyway for Bamisil. And that stops an 8-2 to two Duquesne run. Dukes lost to Rhode Island 70 to 54 in their last game, February 26th. They are one and nine away from Pittsburgh. And as you mentioned, that only win was their first one at UMass, 78-74, back on January 8th. Easily misses the long three. But they get the offensive board, and Easley's got another chance and makes it. Easley was the 2019 SoCon Freshman of the Year at TCU. And there's a shot that does not go in. 
for Freeman, and here comes the Dukes. Johnson, the long jumper, Samuels rebound. Colonials that set back against George Mason, leading 62-56 with five minutes left, but could not hold on. Samuels has his shot partially blocked. Johnson the other way. Goes in, good defense. But they're gonna... And credit where credit's due. What Fordham has been able to do, you know, the, the, the team that everyone has just always assumed will finish 14th, now being in the conversation and not having to play on Wednesday night is something really special for Fordham, and Kyle Neptune deserves a ton of credit for that. Yeah, you were going over the A-10 standings and, and putting down plus fives and plus sixes of teams that, from the predicted order of finish, have really made nice moves this season. Yeah, it's Davidson who was projected to finish sixth, now sitting in first. GW expected to finish 13th, now in eighth. And Fordham uh, sitting in ninth place after being projected to finish in 14th. Joe Bamisil, an NBA three-pointer, side-rimmed it. Hema climbs the ladder for the big rebound. Adams comes over to knock it away from easily out of bounds. So no free layup there for the Dukes. Lindo's back in, and Bamisil will get a rest. UW also looking for their first series sweep of Duquesne since 2017. They've won three of the last five against the Dukes. Lindo knocks it away and gets the steal from Easley. One on one is Lindo, and he makes a beautiful move to get past the defender for the lay-in. GW's got the lead back. You know, Lindo's smiling because sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. That little kiss off the glass was just enough finesse on a play that really could have gotten a little ugly for him finishing up. Here is Spears with the floater, cannot go, but there is Easley with the rebound. He has a shot blocked by Lindo. Davis Larson with the basketball. Over to Spears, shot clock down to 10. Larson will drive and finish, but cannot finish. It doesn't go, and Lindo gets the rebound. Ripped away, though, by Duquesne. Blocked away by GW. Johnson, a third attempt. Ball still around the rim. Nobody gets to it. It's out of bounds off Duquesne. Byron, this is a one-point game, and there are so many looks that you would, in Division I college basketball, would call bunnies that Duquesne hasn't knocked down. It, it really. Toby O'Connor coming back in for Duquesne, and. Ricky Lindo Jr. looking like what he wants to do in the next level here, making a one-on-one -on -one move to get past the defender, Jackie Johnson the third. UW led early on by seven and now lead 15 to 14 with Dean the basketball on the right side for Adams. He move goes for the steal, but there's a foul and a push against Duquesne near the baseline. And it will be against Monir Hima. It is a baseline out for George Washington. Halfway through the first half. James Bishop. Here is Freeman with the runner, back rimmed it. And a sky rebound there from Okani. Bakelja, Mike Bakelja gets it around the horn into the corner. The long jumper is short from Okani. And back the other way comes GW. Adams right to the hoop. Hema another rebound. Davis Larson played four years at Holy Cross and now gets a chance to play again after starting the season as a graduate assistant for Duquesne. Beautiful move by Ricky Lindo Jr. again. And he's feeling confident to begin this game. Yeah, and Ricky's body, when you talk about the sort of that next level, he's just got such versatility. He's strong but quick. He can jump, but he's also really strong down low. He's able to do a little bit of everything. 
Tyson Acuff through a screen. There's a nice hedge from Hunter Dean. And it's Larson with the up and under. And Lindo gets the rebound on the miss. Good defense again by GW. Bishop waiting for an opening, gets the pass back inside for Dean. But he had to protect from it going out of bounds. Bishop out of the corner this time, no good. And the other one, Okani. Up in the conference. Right now they're locked in at 13 apiece. GW's coaching staff had said that rebounding was going to be how they were going to win this game. They haven't done the job so far. That's Duquesne's first miss at the line. They could have tied the game up. They're four of five from the strike. Another thing worth noting, Byron, GW has not yet gone to the line, relying too much on jump shots and not attacking the basket enough. Ball's knocked out of bounds. I say it's off of GW. Five turnovers for the Colonials early. Watch this play again. Knocked away, interesting. Said it was off of Lindo, and here comes the Dukes. Kelsha gets it over to Acuff. He goes to the basket and gives Duquesne a lead. Last year, these teams played twice here in D.C. with the COVID situations, back-to-back -back on a Saturday and a Sunday. GW won one by two points, and Duquesne won the other. Nice backdoor again. Adams to Ricky Lindo Jr., and that's what you want the offense to do. And again, this is what you see with so many transfers coming to this program. It's those moments and those understandings of who's going to be where at what time that, that are a difference maker. They communicate better on the floor, and it's shown in the A-10 standings. Long jumper is good from Acuff. He came in as 44% from outside the arc. That shows why. And O'Connor is called for the push as Lindo falls to his knees, so that's a personal foul against Duquesne. The Dukes will wrap up their season, regular season at least, against LaSalle on March 6th. And as we talked about, GW is going to the Bronx on March 5th against Fordham. And Byron, we haven't had the chance to talk about this, but you talk about the rock fight that is the A-10. How about LaSalle beating Dayton and really ending Dayton's regular season championship hopes? That was an amazing upset. And, you know, those kind of things can happen at Tom Gola Arena. But, yeah, you have to give Ashley and the Explorers some credit for being able to pull something like that off because Dayton has been far and away one of the best teams in the conference. And, you know, now VCU is starting to forge to the top. And we saw what Davidson can do as well. There's some great teams in the A-10. Yeah, and with that loss to LaSalle, you now have to think that, you know, Davidson and VCU are the two teams that have, a, you know, a legitimate at-large case to be made right now in the conference. Toby O'Connor with two quick fouls for Duquesne. They get to go the other way. Primo Spears, though, cannot make that one. And here comes GW. Ricky Lindo Jr., and no one can stop him underneath. They're finding him in the right place, and he's showing his domination ability. Yeah, he's obviously seeing that, you know, D Duquesne's not playing some great ball you man, and he's able to sort of drift in them down low, find those slots, and Duquesne's caught flat-footed time and time again. And they do not have a guy in the front court that can match up with Ricky Lindo Jr., which is helping Lindo start off four for five from the field. Mostly layups or dunks. Good retrieval there by Acuff, but he did step out of bounds as he started his drive. And speaking of one of the bigs for Duquesne, it is Monir Hema coming back in. Another thing worth crediting Lindo for, you know, is such a talented player, has averaged a double-double for a lot of this season. But foul trouble has been such a problem for him. He has not yet committed a foul in this game. And when he's able to log the number of minutes that they would really want from him, you could see what he's truly capable of. Rayon Freeman works his way through a screen. Bamisil now with an attack 
opportunity, and they're going to call an offensive foul. As Hema had position for Bamisil driving to the bucket. So one on Joe. You did see uh, Hema move a little bit to the left to absorb that one. Yeah, slow motion's not generous to Hema on that play. But uh, I think it was how hard he hit him kind of forced the hand for Wally Wojcicki. And it's not very often you see a 6'11 guy go down like that exactly. to his credit. And we got Hunter Dean calling for Spears getting chopped up in the legs. And Noel Brown makes an appearance for Dean as just like Dave talked about, he doesn't want to get some bigs in foul trouble here, so Hunter Dean will step away as he's got two fouls here in the first 15 minutes. And you talk about foul trouble, Noel Brown's season really has been defined by foul trouble. A guy who I think was really hoped to be a starter, a guy they could lean on this season. Staying on the floor has been such a challenge for him this season. He has a nice hedge there to go up against the big center. Great rotation, yep. And the flash over to Hema. He blows the layup and then gets the rebound and stuffs it home. And that's kind of been a theme that's been hurting GW here early is the second chance points for Duquesne. They've had already five offensive rebounds. A steal here for Spears. In the corner, Acuff has the ball knocked away, but it goes to Hema. Johnson, a long three-pointer. With the GW defense so far. Rebounding close, 16 to 15 in favor of GW, but as I talked about, five of the six offensive rebounds from Duquesne. And GW gets the ball after Coach Christian calls the timeout. Facing their largest deficit here in the first half, and they'll get a chance for three points here as Jackie Johnson the third, a little bit outmatched trying to block a shot of Joe Bamisil. It's a foul, and Joe gets to go to the line. Yeah, and, and Joe has really sort of fallen in love with that 27-footer, and uh, lucky to get that foul. I think Joe is a guy who has made a lot of sort of circus shots and crazy shots, but shot selection is something he's really got to work on moving forward. 71% free throw shooter. And that, as Dave talked about, that's the first free throw attempt tonight for GW. And it comes on a three-pointer, not attacking the basket. They've got to move downhill a little bit more. Colonials one for five from downtown. Duquesne two for nine from outside the arc. So two or three there for Bamisil. Stops the quick run by Duquesne. Primo Spears against Quanzi Samuels pulls up from 16, and that's a pretty shot. So now Acuff and Spears starting to get a nice flow for Duquesne. GW looking for the answer here with Freeman. The starters out there with Ricky Lindo Jr. Freeman with a spin against JJ the third. Entry inside. Samuels can't get it to go. Might have been partially blocked. And here comes the Dukes. Jackie Johnson the third gives it back to Spears. Really great off ball defense on the perimeter by the Dukes. Spears trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. That one's blocked by Samuels. Lindo taps it to Freeman. Could be a three-on-two. Bouncer inside, and Samuels finishes. How many times do you love to see that? A big defensive play by a player. He hustles down and is in position for a lay-in. And George Washington, for all the challenges they've had getting the ball around in the, in the perimeter, that low block area has just been wide open all game long. Tough shot again, Bamisil blocks it. Two real poor shot selections by Duquesne. Sanders with a nice fake for Bishop. Freeman on the weave, now takes it himself. Bamisil, tough one out of the corner, and he hits the three. 
second of the game. For Kept his feet, got the block, and that's what turned into that three-pointer for him on the side. Primo Spears for Duquesne. Acuff over to Johnson the third, back to Easley. He'll go down the lane, ball is stripped. And we've got a block call inside. Looked like Easley didn't have possession there. And they call it against Brayon Freeman. Let's watch this again. Yeah. Easley with the pump fake pass Lindo. Here's Freeman to come out. Lindo got a hand in there. And, well, I didn't see much contact between Freeman and Easley. I've got some questions about that call. Easley misses, though. Bamasil doesn't see Lindo. Backs it up for Freeman. And here's Bamasil again. This time from the right side. Does not go. And Duquesne's Hemo sweeps the boards. Coming up at halftime, Brian Thomas, the head coach for GW swimming and diving teams. They double up on A-10 titles. We'll talk to him about that being a double coach of the year in the A-10 when we go to halftime. Don't want to miss that interview with Coach Thomas coming up. Bamisil inside, floats it. Samuels with a big offensive board. Gives it to Bamisil, pass Hema, and look out. Turn out the lights. Two-handed stuff for Bamisil. You know, Jamie and Christian has just been, if you can see in the top of your screen, he's just leaning against the scorer's table and just sort of trying to see if GW is going to gut this last minute of the game out. A defensive stop is going to be really important for them going into the locker room. Here is Johnson in NBA three, in and out. Lindo, the rebound, and the Colonials can go for the final shot of the first half. Here comes Freeman. Spins and fires. That one is not good, so though it is Ricky Lindo Jr. And we're underway to the second half. The starting five you would expect in every other game besides senior night. And here comes GW Brayon Freeman with the basketball. James Bishop, the jumper, and that one is good. And we didn't talk much about James Bishop. He did not score in the first half. Leading score at the beginning of the season. You'd love to see him get going. Yeah, you know, again, it's always been sort of a moment if it's either Joe or James. It's not been a lot of games this year where it's been Joe and James. Tyson Acuff for the Dukes. There's a look at the ball knocked away by Bamisil as he might try to go cross court. Dangerous pass and Bamisil almost had a big steal. GW at the early part of this season was a team that really had a bad habit of getting punched in the mouth at the beginning of second halves. So you're already seeing a better sense of energy coming out in this first 55 seconds of the second half. There's a look at Primo Spears, and he'll drive and finish over Lindo. Nice move to shake Freeman and get some space. Spears is a guy who, if Duquesne's going to win this game, he's got to do better than one of seven the way he started out this game. Joe Bamisil will drive in. Freeman goes outside to Bishop. Can't get that three, but Kelja rebound. Here comes Spears again. Hema was open for a moment. Bad pass again. Bamisil takes it away. Eurostep. Can't get it to finish. Alley-oop to Hema, but Bishop knocks it out of bounds off of Hema. And Hema now twice. You know, we talked in the first half about how he's only played four seasons of, of organized basketball. And he's got a good sense of where to be, but you can tell that that finishing is what comes with repetition and time. Yeah, a couple of big turnovers here for Duquesne. 
And Freeman's got it back for GW. There's Bishop trying to get it to go right side, draws the foul. It will be against Spears, and Bishop will have two at the line. Only GW's second trip this game to the free throw line, and you can tell that Jamie and Christian came out with the game plan of get James Bishop involved in this game. Yeah, you were talking about Spears. If, if uh, GW is going to get something going, you're right. It has to be James Bishop. Bishop in the last few games, 12 points per game and a 24% three-point percentage in his last five outings. And that's not the James Bishop we remembered from the beginning of the year, even though he's still averaging 16.9 for the season. Yeah, you know, he's a guy who's going to get his shots up and he's going to miss a lot of shots. That's just part of the game plan for him and everyone knows and accepts that. But these last few games have been particularly hard for him. But Kelja, and he traveled. A little shuffle of the feet before you start the drive. You know, Jamie and Christian spent the last couple minutes leaning against the scorer's table, just sort of wondering if his team was going to show a little heart. Now you're seeing him a little more animated, encouraging these guys and very happy with the defensive intensity. Here is Freeman underneath the bucket. Bamisil, the long jumper. Acuff for Spears. Gets the layup and the foul, and a chance to cut it to one. So some athletic ability demonstrated there from Primo Spears as Easley and Johnson return for Duquesne. Look at how far across the lane he goes. The ball's away from the defender, and he's able to float it through. Spears was a high school defensive back on his playing football and basketball, all state in both of those sports. He's not afraid of contact. Three-point play for Duquesne, and just like James Bishop, Spears has started the second half quickly. He's up to seven. Hunter team trying to get it to Lindo, knocked away off the backboard, and here comes Duquesne. And a three-pointer for Jackie Johnson, the third. So that's Duquesne's third three-pointer out of 14 attempts. And they get the lead back. Bishop has the ball knocked away and a foul against Easley. And that'll be the first on him. You know, Duquesne came out, the university came out recently and said, hey, Keith Danbrot is our guy. You know, we're standing by him despite the 1-14 and 14 start to conference play. And you can see a few inklings as to why, right? You've got two guys on this roster at Duquesne who are freshmen averaging double digits, two guys who are sophomores averaging double digits. There are moments that you're seeing, hey, this is a team that really can be competitive in the Atlantic 10. Yeah, Trey Williams not available. He's injured. A ton of guys injured. A lot of transfers, so they've had a lot to fight through this season. But there's pieces you can develop, for sure. Ricky Lindo Jr. can't get that one to go. And a nice drive inside, but it's tapped away, and Ricky Lindo Jr. fires it up. A beautiful pass to James Bishop. The crossover can't go, Bamisil, a nice rebound, and he finishes with a reverse layup to tie the game. So Bamisil continues now with a game high 13. Jackie Johnson the third has 12 for Duquesne. Lindo showing all of what he can do. First he was taking the ball coast to coast. Now he's making some great outlet passes to get fast breaks going. The defense again by GW Hunter Dean leading the break.
Here is Freeman. The step through. Dean taps it out for Bishop. Two teams who don't shoot the ball very well. Linda with the alley-oop, can't get it to go. That was a nice idea on the inbound. But every possession is going to matter in this game the way it's been played out so far. And here comes Primo Spears, back up top to Jackie Johnson the third. Spears, another nice spin. Tough shot at the corner is gonna be short. Tyson Acuff misses, and here comes Freeman. And a shuffle of the feet. I want to congratulate the women's basketball team beating St. Bonaventure first round of the 810 women's tournament today in Wilmington, Delaware, 54 to 49. They'll play LaSalle tomorrow at 1.30 in the second round. Kiara Frames hitting a huge three-pointer to seal it late for Caroline McCombs. Double-double from Maya with Taiwo, and this is a GW team that scored only two points in the second quarter and still was able to survive in advance. Congratulations to the women. They just played LaSalle a couple of days ago, so they know exactly what the game plan will be against the Explorers. Primo Spears misses there. Lindo has it tapped away, but he uses his strength to maintain the possession away from Easley. That's his 10th rebound, two points away from another double-double. And he had a double-double against Duquesne in their win earlier in the season, 11 points and 12 rebounds, but a bad play here. However, Gina Blake gets it right back. Brendan Adams into the corner, long three-pointer from Bambasil. Huge mistake by Duquesne, and the Colonials connect. You know, we, we needed to start putting a, a parental warning on the ugly basketball that we saw over the last two minutes. One team is going to be able to assert themselves and take over this second half. Bamasil trying to make a GW. Here is Easley on the baseline. Into the corner to Wally Ratecki, but he does not play for Duquesne. <laughs> so that is a turnover. A minor inconvenience. And quickly Spears will step out and Mike Bekelja comes back in for Duquesne. And it's been back and forth here the last 10 or 15 minutes. Colonials now can go up by two possessions. Lindo left open. Look out. Goes all the way through and finishes. Could have been an and one. And he's got that double-double. Bakelja against Bamasil. No room to operate. Look at the defense. Triple teaming easily. Gets it back underneath, and Lindo blocks the reverse attempt. Again, Lindo all the way to the bucket and finishing again. I can't stop him. 12 points, 10 rebounds. Seven in a row for GW. You know, there, there's games where you just, he's shown great court vision. He's moved the ball really well. And, and really, again, this is just an outstanding senior night for Ricky Lindo. Double-doubles in both games against Duquesne this year. Ball's knocked out of bounds by Bamisil. No pass is easy against Bamisil. Primo Spears back in for Duquesne. It's just really remarkable when you look at Joe Bamisil, how long his arms are. He can scratch his knees without having to bend over. It's unbelievable. And here is Primo Spears. And he hits from the right side. And the lead is five for GW. Can't get that one to go, and here comes Duquesne. Kwanzi Samuels gets the rebound. GW with the ball back, under 12 left.
Oh, goodness. Bamasil almost cuts that pass off, and he's left wide open for, like, the interception and the lay-in. I, I still don't know who was the intended receiver of that pass. I don't know if Brayon Freeman just had incredible court vision knowing Bamasil was coming in, or if Brendan Adams is still waiting for that pass to come to him. And Duquesne did not either. 18 for Joe. And the wheels are starting to come off here for the, the GW vi victory, but uh, matchup-wise, it might be a tough road to hoe. Brendan Adams now for GW has the ball stripped underneath. David Lar Davis Larson with the steal. Jackie Johnson the third will drive and draw the foul. He'll get two at the line. Looking at the stats as we came back, points in the paint, a reason for GW in the lead now. 30 points in the paint for GW, and what's remarkable to me about that, Byron, is they've only shot five free throws. So they're doing a great job of finding open lanes, not drawing a lot of contact. It's a little bit of Duquesne's defense and a little bit of GW maybe playing a little soft offensively. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, Duquesne's not fouling them when they get close, and they're having a lot of layups that are I don't want to say uncontested, but certainly not getting a lumberjack chop when you get inside. You know, I, guys like Bekelja, I think, have played some great perimeter defense, but the interior defense for Duquesne has been rough. It's been rough tonight. Brayon Freeman. Bonzi Samuels, a tough cross pass interception for Spears. And he's able to go all the way to lay it in. Freeman tries to answer the other way with a sweet move, and he does. So many different moves there from Brayon Freeman. Ball's knocked out of bounds, it'll stay with Duquesne. Bonzi wanted to go the other way. Here comes Hunter Dean for Samuels, halfway through the second half. Connie will go to the basket against Hunter Dean. He's able to get it to go, and he draws the foul against Dean. So a three-point possibility now for the Dukes. Hunter Dean, I think, has shown a lot of improvement over the course of this year. Had a real coming out party against URI up at Rhodey. But his interior defense on that low block is still something that's got to have, needs a lot of development. He's got to get a little stronger. He's got to improve his positioning. He's drawn a lot of fouls, and he's also allowed much bigger players to kind of have their way with him over the course of these, these last few games. And then he's got to ask Ricky Lindo Jr. to help him out a little bit there. And O'Connor was able to go right past Lindo before Dean came over. Yeah, and I think when you started the season, you kind of penciled in Noel Brown as the guy who was going to sort of help you down low. And uh, Noel's just kind of still a project when it comes to that defense and staying on the floor. Freeman from the left side. Bishop looking for some room. Gets it to Freeman. Lindo, tight rope on the baseline. Four on the shot clock, has to force it up. Does not draw iron. Spears, a possible three on two. He goes coast to coast and gets it to go. Eight to two run for Duquesne. Spears is a player. He's got a lot of pride. He's got a lot of heart and hustle. Yeah, he's got a lot of moves. Certainly does. Linda will drive and draw the foul here. So it'll be baseline trigger for George Washington with Okani getting his third personal foul and quickly the 6'11 center Hema comes back in but he comes back in very easily Dean has it on the inbound back to Bishop 
Five in a row for Duquesne in the last minute nine. Lindo inside for Dean, can't get it to go, draws the foul. And it will be the big center who just came in, Hema picking up the personal foul. And he's got two. Watching this play again, I was sort of surprised to see Lindo make the extra pass. Hema's really big, but he had a little bit, of, he was kind of on Hema's hip. I thought he had an opportunity to get at least a trip to the line out of it, and shared the ball with Dean, and now Dean has the opportunity to make this a three-point game. Dean did not score against the Patriots. He has two tonight. Coming in a 55% free throw shooter, but that looked true there. And he has been incredibly impactful for this team. 6.2 points, 7.4 rebounds the last 11 games for GW. Talk about a big week for GW. Two national TV games, or if you remember, winning at, winning home against Mason and then that game with for Hunter Dean, having the double-double up at Rhodey, really changed the trajectory of this conference season. He has an advantage on the player that's defending him and got to give him the rock until he stops scoring. Dean makes a nice catch on that inbound. Easily got popped in the mound. Bamasil to the baseline, into the corner. Lindo, ball is loose, out of bounds. Oh, wow, saying it's off of Lindo. Looked like Easley's feet were out of bounds. Oh my goodness, it's a foul against Ricky Lindo Jr. Not out of bounds. Watch this again, knocked away there by Johnson, and here's Lindo diving for the ball. I mean, Listen, does he make contact with Easley? Sure, but Easley's doing the exact same thing. That's yeah, a 50-50. saying that he undercut the Duquesne player, so Lindo will go out with his second personal. Here's Jackie Johnson III has also demonstrated his ability to hit shots off of screens and he gets one to go there. So lead down to one. Johnson's got 15 for the Dukes. His career high is 27, so he can score if need be for Duquesne. Bishop, Bishop only one of five on the night so far. There he is inside to Dean. Can't get that one to go. Good defense easily. It's nice to see Bishop sharing the ball, but if they're going to get some separation, he's got to knock down shots. Here's O'Connor with a nice jumper inside, but that one's no good. Big rebound for Easley. And here's Spears for three, and that one's way short. Out of bounds to GW. Tyson Acuff coming back in for Duquesne. One point game, 618 left. Bishop. Over to Adams, a long three. Dean fighting for the rebound, ripped away. Crowd wanted a call, Acuff knocked it away and it goes back to Duquesne. That one's off for Johnson and Bamisil now transition. He'll pull up and hit. A three-pointer for Joe Bambasil. The Colonials extend back to four. Three of the four threes tonight from GW's Joe Bambasil. There are so many times where I'm like, that's not a great, okay, that's a good shot. <laughs> He's got 21. Johnson trying to finish. Can't. Easily gets the rebound. Spears goes up, ball's knocked away. Bamisil sees the ball after a pretty pass, goes down hard. 
and a foul against Duquesne. It'll be Tyson Acuff pickling up and slippery underneath the bucket there, so they'll clean it up. Bamis Hill on transition takes it himself. I mean, that's a shot that takes some stones. And to knock it down like that, you know, GW is letting Duquesne hang around in this game at their own peril. You know, one in 14 in conference is Duquesne coming into this game. But they're showing, I think, a little bit more desire sometimes in this game. And it's been so wildly inconsistent with just five minutes left. GW's got to create some separation. Here's Hunter Dean. And he makes a nice move to finish in the lane and almost as if to say, that's what I can do. Love the way Dean was able to use that jump stop to square up to the basket while he was moving away. Six points, three rebounds for Hunter Dean. Larson will drive to the paint. Easily a long jumper, no. Bamisil rebound foul against Bakelja underneath. And the lack of firepower now for Duquesne is showing again as they have no one that can consistently score. They don't take bad shots per se. They just don't make them. Three of 21 from three-point line so far, shooting just 33% from the field. And that's been basically this whole season for the Dukes. Steal for Easley as Freeman gives it up, and he dunks it home. And a foul on the inbound. Kevin Easley, a guy you can usually get double digits from, uh, has not shot very well, but he's got five steals. So he's doing his part defensively. And that was a big play moments ago where he got that steal and the lay-in. Freeman will work. Up and under, in and out. Rebound tapped around, and Larson's able to find it in the corner. GW hasn't moved very well off the ball, and Duquesne's played some pretty good defense again on the perimeter, forcing a difficult shot for Freeman. Here's a drive inside, and somehow Tyson Acuff is able to finish. Brendan Adams against Primo Spears. Lindo double team got it back to Dean can't get it to go but he draws the foul so a good two-man game there between Lindo and Dean to create the advantage for Hunter Dean against the smaller Duquesne player well, it looks like he's got a bloody nose in that left nostril Byron Duquesne has lost 14 games in a row They've spent a lot of these games down 20, down 30 in, in these games. And you can tell this is a Duquesne team right now with two and a half minutes left. That smells blood in the water and smells opportunity. And, and I'm not sure from the body language and the, and the lack of poise we're seeing right now from GW's offense that they're taking that threat seriously right now, but they're running out of time. Hunter Dean goes one of two at the line. It's still a one possession game. Duquesne 17 fouls, GW with four. So the Colonials can be aggressive here on defense. A big miss there for Easley and Dean the rebound. And it was a great crossover from Spears, an opportunity for Easley. These guys, if they can improve their shooting this offseason, they, they're a much, much better team. Dean by himself, got it into Lindo. Can't finish. Dean taps it out of bounds. Duquesne ball. 
So again, a chance for Duquesne to cut into the three-point lead. And if you're Keith Danbrot, how do you skin this cat? This is a team that's, you know, a three-pointer gets you a tie game, but you're three of 21 from outside. Jackie Johnson, an impossible three-pointer. And that ties the game. Johnson from way downtown. He's got 18. I stand corrected. So now it's all even with 90 seconds left. Primo Spears thought he had a steal, but Sean Hull's got a different read of that play. It's a personal foul. Duquesne's on a 7-1 run right now, Byron, and this is a GW team that gave up a 13-0 run to give the game away to George Mason. You know, when I spoke to the coaching staff earlier today, they said that part of sort of the next stage of evolution for this program is to sort of have that winning mentality to know that they can beat great teams and close out games against, you know, everyone else. And um, this game, I think, is highlighting that they've got a few little ways to go. Brendan Adams, a 78% free throw shooter, makes the first one. And GW back in the lead. Two timeouts for Duquesne, three timeouts for GW. <laughs> 80 seconds left, two point game. Primo Spears. Driving all the way through, can't find anything as Acuff. They got easily. Misses on the three, Larson rebound. And they've got a foul on the floor against GW. So it'll be Brayon Freeman picking up the personal. And it doesn't look like that's a shooting foul. That's only the fifth team foul against GW. You have to imagine with the way Spears has been controlling this ball. Game, 18 points including three three-pointers. Three of the team's four. And he's got the ball, he'll try. Flips it back out. Larson, the long jumper, and he hits the three. He was a grad assistant to start this season. Averages 0.8 points per game. And he was on the coaching staff, close to Coach Christian and the GW bench. I'm trying to create space for Ricky Lindo down low. It's worked so well for so long. Here is Freeman, the Lindo screen. Another screen, Freeman drives against Easley. Bishop down low, backs out to the wing, and now drives himself, lost the handle, got it back, fires! Side rim, no good, Larson rebound, and he is fouled with 28 seconds left, but that is not into the bonus yet, so it'll just be Duquesne basketball. Lindo never really dove down to the post. They tried to spread the floor, create isolation, and James Bishop, we've seen so many times over the last couple of years, uh, Jamie and Christian chooses to put the ball in his hand in the last moments of a game. The challenge for James, though, is that he's not great at creating his own shot. Well, that is the sixth team foul. It is against GW. That's the third on Lindo. And here comes the inbound. Jackie Johnson. Shot clock is off, so the Colonials will need a steal or a foul. And they do here. Johnson will get a chance to go to the line. Freeman picks up his third. And so Johnson gets a chance to go to the line. He's five of six at the free throw line tonight. And he is... 82% on the season. It's one and one for Duquesne. So Johnson can make it a three-point game with 25 seconds left if he hits a free throw. He does not. Two-point game. Shot clock off. Adams rebound. Freeman up the right side. Freeman will drive against Johnson. Leans in. Shot blocked by Easley. Out of bounds. Bamisil comms to the ball. bamisil has got it in the corner. Drive to the top of the key. Down the lane. Good matchup. And a foul there. But Kelja cannot match up with Bamisil, and Bamisil will get a go to the line. Easley came over to help out, but it was too late. But Kelja's irate right now, and, and he's played very good on-ball defense. He drew James Bishop for most of the first half. You see him on Bishop's hip, 
And I think he's just a step slow. Nice job by Bamisil getting to the free throw line. Bamisil on the season, 71% at the line. And he's two of three tonight. Big free throw there. Ten seconds left. Dean coming back in. Jackie Johnson the third for Bakelja. Bamisil's got 22. And, and as we've gotten to know Joe Bamisil, these are the moments he wants to be part of. Two for two for Bamisil. Game time. Shot clock off for Duquesne. 59 all. Up the right side. Primo Spears. Shaking and Baker gets Bishop. Looking for a chance. Lost the handle. And we'll go to overtime. The ball is in the air and tap to GW. Here is Adams. Bishop the long three. And he got it. What a way to start the OT for GW. Just his second field goal of this game. Jackie Johnson wanted to answer, and he's going to try, and he does. Goodness gracious. Jackie Johnson, the third. Brendan Adams didn't give him a lot of space either. Just a quick release, high arcing shot. And for a team that can't shoot the three pointer, they've done pretty well in the second half and now in overtime. He has four three pointers tonight and 22 overall points. Here comes Bishop. And again, he finishes on the left side. James Bishop, all five of GW's points to start the OT. Ball knocked away. Spears lost it. Bishop got it back. And he knocks it away again. Spears getting it back rather out of bounds goes Ricky Lindo Jr. And making sure that the dance team is okay and some fans over there. And Ricky also not feeling so great after running into the stands. Banging his knees up. He's checking that shin, making sure nothing, nothing's bleeding. Yeah, that stings. You can see how much it hurts. And Wally Ritecki is uh, going to give him some time. That's uh, a veteran official helping out Ricky Lindo Jr. Inbound in the corner, the long jumper is not close. Rebound, Dean. Colonials with the lead and the ball. James Bishop. To Hunter Dean, and the nice pick and roll, and Dean with the thunder jam. GW playing its most assertive basketball since the beginning of the second half. And you have to imagine they kind of recognize they got that, that extra life in this game, and they're not going to let this one go. A three is no good out of the corner by Johnson. Larson gets the rebound. Jackie Johnson, another long three, and that one hits the front rim, and a chance on the break for Bishop. Bishop inside, Adams lost the ball. He was tripped out of bounds to Duquesne. I don't know if Brendan Adams had an ability, had the ability to get to that ball, but he was tripped up. And here's the previous score by Bishop, who brings the defense to him, the double team by Duquesne, and it's a huge mistake as Bishop showing his veteran leadership to easily find it to Hunter Dean for the dunk. And Jackie Johnson is just going to fire three pointers. <laughs> and he hit the first one of overtime, but since then, not close. If at first you don't succeed, Byron, you try and you yeah. try and you try again. Well, that's too bad for them. They just don't have some answers besides him right now. Primo Spears' ball handling has been questionable, and now Johnson can't hit threes like he was a few minutes ago. And here comes Bishop, and again, he finishes. James Bishop having a gigantic overtime, looking like James Bishop 
of the regular season. The lead is up to six. And a Here's a drive. And no good on the drive by Acuff. And we've got a foul against Duquesne. So easily will pick up the personal foul, and the Colonials will walk down and shoot some free throws. Keith Dambrot keeping the ball away from Jackie Johnson and making Primo Spears create some offense. And again, this is a team that has consistently gotten pretty decent looks and just haven't been able to put them down. Hunter Dean at the line for GW, now three of five at the strike. He's got nine points and seven rebounds, a steal. Still two possession game for Duquesne. Spears to the bucket again, same play, and this time he gets it to go. And one. So they desperately needed that. Spears is a fun guy to watch, and again, willing to just attack the basket, absorb whatever contact it takes. Reminds me, if you're thinking of, for GW fans, of kind of the way Tony Taylor would play. If you remember Byron, he would attack the bucket, and you would just see him, you know, eating hardwood over and over again, but he was a glutton for the punishment and willing to do what it took to get points on the board. Ricky Lindo Jr. foul number four. Big miss there for Duquesne. Lindo gets the rebound. 90 seconds left, up by four. Here comes Brandon Adams. All the way, can't get it to go. Spears leads the break. Three on two, goes himself. Off the glass and in, basket counts and the foul. He has a chance to cut it to one. And the speed we're seeing now from Primo Spears making a huge difference. Yeah, and not only is he lightning quick, he's playing with real urgency. You know, uh, playing, I think, games that are wise beyond his years, again, as the freshman. He now has 17, and he misses again. If he had made those two free throws, this game would be tied. Adams has it up the right side. Now tries the left. Bamisil against Pakelja. Looking inside, and that was too many passes. He has such an advantage over Pakelja. If you get that close, just fired up there. Yeah. Yeah, and it's interesting to, to note that Brendan Adams is the one with the ball in his hand in this uh, overtime as the point guard, Brayon Freeman. Sitting on the bench right now, Adams pretty good at holding on to the basketball, but he's not really an offensive threat to attack the bucket the way Brayon Freeman can be. Takes away a dimension in GW's offense. Spears the stutter step, goes baseline. Back outside to Larson, he'll try to go all the way through, and he finishes to tie the game. There was a clear out because Lindo was going for the ball, and that allowed Larson, good job by him to recognize that to tie it up. Adams almost looking at Coach Christian for a timeout call, but he will not take it. Differential about five seconds, shot clock to game clock. And the handoff is to Freeman, he's back in. Bishop three-pointer left side, got it! Another biggest shot of the game from James Bishop. 10 seconds left. Larson in the corner, the long three, and he buries it with five seconds left. Colonials have a chance here for the game winner. Three seconds left, Freeman turns around, fires from way outside, no good. Second over time. Got it for that. Duquesne is seven of 30 outside the arc. And they've hit some gigantic threes here in the last five to 10 minutes. Spears, that one's too hard, and the rebound, Lindo. Easily almost got a sixth steal of the game.
Bishop pump fakes and fires NBA range and hits again. James Bishop on fire in the overtimes. He's got three three-pointers now and 17 overall. And he put Primo Spears on skates. Spears a pretty up and under move to cut it to one. Spears has also come alive with 17 points. Now 19 for Duquesne. Bishop past Spears, blocked by Spears. Johnson in front. Freeman tries to catch up, can't. Johnson finishes, and Duquesne's got the lead. James Bishop is a great outside shooter. Attacking the basket is just something that he hasn't fully developed in his game. He's undersized, and getting into the paint like that is going to be tough for him. Here comes Hunter Dean, low blocks. Lindo tries to pass it back to Bishop, stolen away. Easily the other way, back outside. Long three is too long, too hard for Acuff. But he gets the rebound. No look over to Johnson, thinks about the three against Ricky Lindo Jr. Now spins against Ricky Lindo Jr. and draws the foul. And Ricky's got to be careful, yep, he's fouled out. But he's got to be careful here as he goes to the bench. Wally Ritecki's watching his reaction. Free throws coming up for Duquesne. So Ricky finishes with a double-double, 12 points and 14 rebounds. Two steals and a block, but obviously didn't love that foul call. Yeah, Ricky is heated down on the bench. And, you know, when you look at this box score, Duquesne, 14 steals in this game. And if their shooting wasn't as poor as it was, this game really could have gotten out of hand for GW. No kidding. Jackie Johnson, the third, misses a free throw. He's now six of nine. He came in as an 82% free throw shooter. Yeah, they're shooting below 40% for, uh, overall. Oh, my goodness. Huge misses for Duquesne. Below 23% from three. Barely 50% from the free throw line. And yet they're still winning by one. GW just hasn't taken care of the basketball all game long. Neither team has made a free throw in OT. 0 for 4 for Duquesne, 0 for 2 for GW. Ball is lost, but Bishop got it back. And it's lost again, and this time it'll be showtime for Easley as Johnson feeds it. It's almost a shame that someone has to win this game. Freeman will bring it up the right side. Plenty of time left in the OT. Fifteen to six run for Duquesne. Easily saves it in bounds. Jackie Johnson the third. No numbers. Tries to split the defense. Got it inside for Acuff, and he finishes for Duquesne. And they have matched their largest lead of the game. Jamie and Christian has two timeouts. The offense has started to sputter. They're, the guys aren't playing particularly well together, and yet he's charging them to figure it out on their own. Easily trying to do too much there for Duquesne. Draw a call for the foul against Hunter Dean, and now Hunter will get the chance to go back to the line. But as you can imagine, fatigue might be a little bit of a factor. No one has made a free throw yet in the OTs. As Hunter Dean missed two, now he's got a chance to rectify that. Especially with Ricky Lindo Jr. out of the five fouls. Hunter Dean's play becomes even that more important. And he hits them both. Hunter Dean has 11. Spears will back it out. Dean guarding him now. Spears will drive through, and that one's too hard. Ball knocked away. Bamasil's got it. Weaving through the defense into the front court. Colonials down three, but with the ball. Ooh. 
James Bishop looking for some room. Spins it out for Freeman, the three. Got it! Tying the game up with a minute left. Brayon Freeman showing some skills. GW has done enough to stay alive in this game, Byron. Are they going to do enough to win? They've got to lock down defensively, and that's not how you do it. Five in a row for George Washington. Spears will drive and draw the foul. Colonials are eight of 16 from downtown. And Spears, uh, just like Jackie Johnson III, trying to will this one for Duquesne. Look at the eyes of Bishop here to find his teammate. Yeah, you know, Bishop last year spent a lot of time being on an island in these clutch moments and having to find ways to create his own long-distance shot. Knowing that you've got a guy in Bamisil and in Freeman is huge for this team. First made free throw in the overtime sessions from Duquesne's Primo Spears. They were 0 for 4 before that one. As Duquesne hits their 80th point, I want to highlight they've only broken the 60-point barrier three times in conference play. The most points they've scored in a regulation game is 88, but that was before the A-10 started playing. Two-point lead. Bishop, shot clock, game clock, differential 14. Colonials need some points. Bishop thinking about the three, ball loose on the floor. Freeman's got it. He'll go to the 10. Can't get that one to go. Ball bouncing around. Adams had it for a moment, and he is fouled, and he'll go to the line. Last time, the end of regulation, they could not get that final shot off. GW would love that to happen again. Primo Spears will bring the ball up for Duquesne. They've lost 14 in a row. Seven seconds left for Spears. Five seconds left. Three-pointer. No good. Triple overtime. Fouls, Ricky Lindo already out. Duquesne, no one is in foul trouble. This one, Jackie Johnson third, the third, knew what Hunter Dean was going to do and stepped in front of that ball for the tip. He gets the ball on the right side against Bamasa. Goes to the bucket and delivers. James Bishop has been outstanding in the OTs. Freeman will go right to the bucket. Can't get it to go, but he gets the rebound and second effort by Brayon Freeman. Ties it up. Digging down deep here, triple overtime. Duquesne, 14 losses in a row. GW, two losses in a row. Driving and finishing is Acuff. I'm not going to say that GW's played great on-ball defense all game long, but you have to imagine now as we are in our 52nd minute of the game that, you know, really buckling down defensively is getting harder and harder with fatigue. Bamisil slams it home, and he has a chance for an and one. He does a pull-up on the rim, and the game is tied. So he could give GW, look at this pass by Hunter Dean. Has to be super careful there, too. Could have been a technical foul, but Wally Ratecki and the crew did not call it, and he'll get a chance for a three-point play. Yeah, Hunter Dean has done a really nice job becoming a little point forward for GW over the course of this season. And if Joe has the opportunity to get on a highlight reel, he's going to take it. Three-point play by Joe Bamisil, the lead back in GW's arms, 86-85. Here is easily trying to finish. Too hard on that one. Adams the rebound. Colonials led 68-62 in the first OT. Duquesne led 79-74 in the second OT. Here comes Hunter Dean. Going at easily. To the bucket. Misses the dunk. Jackie Johnson the third, going in, too high off the rim, tap no good, rebound with Hunter Dean. So that's 
two attempts within about two feet for Duquesne. No joy. Yeah, Johnson and Spears both have great ability to break down defenders, but they're not great finishers yet. Larson and Freeman going at it, and the held ball possession favoring GW with 241 left in triple OT. So the shot clock will say 18 for the Colonials, up by one with the ball. We'll clean up the perspiration here, and then we'll get back to basketball. 26 for Bamisil. His career high is 29. 26 for Johnson. And his career high is 27. Bamisil off the screen, drives all the way through. Got it. What a tremendous play by Bamisil. Even with all the contact with the Duquesne player, he still has the ability to measure that shot and put it home for a spectacular two. Johnson all the way, shot is blocked by Dean, but they're gonna say a foul on the shot and he'll get two at the line. I, I believe that call is going on Brendan Adams. Oh, they called it on Joe Bambasil, which I'm fascinated by. Two on Bambasil, Johnson at the line, six of 10. But Kelsha coming in for the shooter, so he'll wait. He needs Johnson to make this one to come in the game. And he does. One point lead for GW. Little bit of pressure. Nope, they're going to back off. Freeman coming up. One point lead. Hunter Dean. Freeman comes out of there. Bishop. Freeman will drive right down the lane. Floater, got it! Rayon Freeman and Joe Bamisil delivering. The defense needs to step up. The timeout for Keith Gambrot. That keep loading up on these timeouts and at least 50% in the OTs. Jackie Johnson the third trying to drive against Adams. No room there. Now he'll try again. Goes all the way through and can't get it to go. Hunter Dean rebound. Again, super quick and just cannot finish. But credit where it's due, Byron. This is a team that has had three guys transfer midseason. Trey Williams is hurt. It's been just an absolute a nightmare of a season for Duquesne. And they are playing some extraordinarily gritty basketball right now. Bishop will fire and he'll get a chance to go to the line. Larson will pick up the personal. So two more here for Bishop. He makes them at least one of them and it's a two possession game. James Bishop had four points in the regulation. He's got 18. And he makes it a five point lead with only 64 seconds left. Here goes Johnson, the Euro step, and he does finish this time. Three point lead for GW. Duquesne could get the ball back with a 22 second shot clock differential, so they need a stop. GW can make it more difficult with a basket here to try to put the game away. And as a reminder, GW in the double bonus. Bamisil to the basket and got it to go. Five point lead again, only 30 seconds left. Johnson will fire. Bamisil rebound, shot clock is off, and that will pretty much do it. James Bishop is fouled by Larson. The Colonials are going to find a way to win this one with 18 seconds left. 
incredible effort here tonight. Joe Bamisil has again hit a career high, getting to 30 points. Previous was 29 this season, and Bishop will step to the line. What an overtime session, all three of these by James Bishop. 21.17 in the triple OTs. All the way through, they'll let Spears go. And he survived Duquesne. Here is Adams to inbound. Looking to get it in, got it to Bishop. He's double teamed and fouled. And he'll run down and shoot two more free throws with 10.7 seconds left. And Bamisil is okay. I cannot remember a player with more flair from the, for the dramatic than Joe Bamisil. Well, he has a smile on his face for the entire game. He yep. is having fun for what has, what, been 55 minutes of basketball tonight. Yep. And that, you know, that rubs off on his teammates in a pressure situation. You know, he's like, let's make it fun. Let's have fun. Of course, he takes this all very serious, but it's refreshing to see him out there smiling all the time. Yep. James Bishop, 23, eight for eight from the line. Spears all the way through and scores with five seconds left. The inbound, and this time, Duquesne will not foul, and that will do it. The Colonial.